Wherever you go in this fine city, new buildings seem to be sprouting up all over the place. But there are some old buildings that are managing to dodge the wrecking ball and reinvent themselves. It's a process of mutation and rejuvenation that's been taking place in the capital for centuries. In today's programme, I'll be visiting some of these remarkable buildings and meeting the enthusiasts who help to keep them alive. Like Dotty, the bingo-playing film fan. Celia, who fell in love with her local Lou. And Ivy, a dancing queen from South London. But first up, come with me on a journey back to a time before power showers and hot tubs. This is Ironmonger Row Baths near Old Street. Nowadays, it's a place where the locals come for a quick dip but it didn't start life as a swimming pool. To understand why it was originally built, you need to know what this part of London was like back in the 1920s and 30s. To put me in the picture, I've met up with an Armonger Row regular, David Hyams. This was one of the poorest areas, not only in London, but one of the poorest areas in the whole country. They lived in houses which were dilapidated, falling down, large families, one room, downstairs, across the yard to the toilet, no baths inside. It was, it was chronic poverty, chronic. And this was one of the worst areas in London for that. The death rates for infant mortality were twice that of the country as a whole. Tuberculosis was twice that of the country as a whole. They were in real poverty here. If poverty and poor housing were the problems, then buildings like Ironmonger Row were the solution. When it opened in 1931, it provided the locals with a shiny new laundry capable of 40,000 washes a year. That's an awful lot of dirty socks. The laundry's still going strong today. In fact, it's one of the few surviving examples anywhere in the capital. But that wasn't all the new building had to offer. For the hundreds of locals who had nothing but a tin bath at home, there were also the slipper baths. 80 individual bathtubs, each sitting proudly in its own private cubicle. Well, it would have been absolutely amazing. You could have a bath once a week. You could keep clean. Hot water, soap, towels. Wonderful. Now, well, I have to admit, there was a brief period of my life, much to the shame of my mother, I'm sure, when we didn't have a bath. Here's some used to have to go up the Merlin Street. Yeah. And exactly that, yeah. yeah. You got a certain time in the bath, a certain amount of soap, and then you were out again, yeah. 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 And those slipper baths still exist. Um, not in use nowadays, but you can actually go and see them if you wanted to go and see them. They, That'd be great, yeah, can they? Yes. Yep, we haven't got them seen now. Great. It may have been built for a down-to-earth purpose, but that didn't stop them laying on the style. After making it up all these stairs, I reckon you'd have been glad of a lie-down and a soak. Today, the slipper baths, or what's left of them, are hidden away at the back of this storeroom. Oh, I say, there it is. Look at that. What a yeah. handsome looking fellow that is. Very solid. If you wanted extra hot water, you could shout it out, and they might give you extra hot water. And ancient in bars, apparently, between first and second class bars. Sixpence for first class and threepence for second class. I seem to recall there was a time limit, like 10, 15 minutes at the most. Well, quite likely, because you have to turn over so many people. So many people want to use it. At one stage, they, they used to queue all the way down the stairs, out of here, downstairs, to. Um, for use of the bars, and if you stayed there too long, obviously it held up the operation. Come on out! We're going to put some more cold water in. Yep, yep. You playing around in there? Out you go. You're not having any longer there. Dirty customers in one end, brand spanking, sparkly new ones coming out the other. That's right. The days of a nice old soak in a slipper bath are long gone, but just down the corridor, some old-fashioned luxuries are still going full steam ahead. Go on, just a drop more hot, please. There were lots of Turkish baths in the pre-war capital, all part of the campaign to help Londoners keep clean and healthy. Only a handful of the originals are still open for business, and nowadays, they're just a place to unwind and enjoy a well-earned bit of pampering. I've met up with two of the regulars at Ironmonger Row to sample the delights of a Turkish steam. So how long have you been coming here, Edna? Well, I've been coming since the early 70s, you know, just come with the girls I worked with. And I started in the 80s. So you're a newcomer, so... <laughs> yeah, I would say I'm a newcomer. <laughs> Only the 25 years. Yeah, you? but still, yeah. And what is it you love about coming here? The steam. 
And are you the sort of person who likes to plunge in that freezing cold water? No. Have you ever tried? I, yes, and then I went away for about six months on holiday. And when I came back, I just couldn't get the plunge to go. <laughs> I, might, I might one day. Edna is encouraging me to start it back, but... I am. <laughs> I'm the one that goes in there. The mad one. So you're not worried about your ticker when you get in that freezing cold plunge pool? No. Oh, it's good for you. Well, you're tough, Edna, that's well, it. Probably. <laughs> and so there's a little community down here, really? Yes, yes. All kinds of different people, yeah. And once you take your clothes off, you're all the same. Sometimes we pass each, uh, each other on the street and you don't realise it <laughs> because we have our clothes on. <laughs> and how long would you stay in here at a session? I normally come in at nine o'clock. I'm the first one in. Well, I have my tea and toast about eleven o'clock. <laughs> Very nice. And then I have a kip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a tough life. Yeah, I'm back in the steam. I don't lay on the bed outside. I've my whole time in this steam room in here, in the plunge pool. Three or four hours in here, you'd come out like a twig, wouldn't you? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving Edna and Sue to their busy schedule, I'm off to pay a call at another great public convenience. When you... You've got to go. But the places to go have nearly all gone. Which is a shame, really, because in the glory days of public lavatories, London was literally overflowing with these wonderful temples of convenience. The Victorians were great pioneers of the public, Lou but most of their pristine little palaces of hygiene are in a sorry state today. Lots of them are now under lock and key, decaying gracefully, well away from public view. It takes a determined soul to breach the defences and step into this hidden world. Someone, in fact, like Celia Stothard, who recently embarked on an unlikely love affair with this deserted lavatory in Kennington. How did you get in here in the first place? We managed to get a few locals, one with bolt cutters, one of my neighbours had bolt cutters, another was um, ex-government and um, spoke with authority and we came over here and cut bolts off and got in, which is the first time anyone's been in since 1988, which is when it was closed. And what is it you love so much about this funny little place? I think because it's so extraordinary that it's still here. This area and this building is a reflection of Victorian engineering and social values, and it's at the heart of a community. It's where the big estates over there and the Georgian squares over there all come together along the big roads. So it's a real meeting place for communities. And it's a kind of showcase for what people cared about 100 years ago. And a rather marvellous little place it is, and I'm noticing very proudly uh, prominent signs of the manufacturers. Yeah. That's the great thing, is that it's, it's all manufactured locally. It was made by, as you can see, B. Finch & Co. Sanitary Engineers of Lambeth. And look at it, I mean, there's mosaic floor, marble here, porcelain there. It's a little local Lambeth manufactured gem, which reflects what the area used to be about. And no self-respecting Victorian lav was complete without its attendant. The attendant apparently wore his little three-quarter length brown coat, polished, polished shoes, you know. You'll puck a chap. The part. And that extraordinary ventilation which then becomes a huge work of art out there on the pavement. Yeah. And nobody could understand why this uh, magnificent historic item was left there to rot for so many years. But Lambeth have recently restored it above ground. and. We now have a gilded top. And what are your hopes for the future of this place? Some people would like it to be a lavatory again, but um, you'd have to have an attendant. There's no disabled access, so we can't do that. So we're negotiating to take the lease from Lambeth and turn it into an arts and heritage exhibition and events venue. So it'll still be, all these wonderful urinals will be kept, but we might make a bit of space by re removing one of the three labs. And local artists, of which there are many, 
would like to have modern installations, we can have sound installations, schools can use it to learn about engineering or society. It's going to be, I hope, a high profile space that brings people here and shows everybody what great things are going on in Kennington and Lambeth that nobody knows about because they just roar through. So we hope it's going to offer real opportunities for local people to show what they do. And I hope also that it makes so much money it can fund a new loo above ground and that will keep everyone happy. Celia's dream is not as far-fetched as it sounds. Under the streets of London, many old loos are enjoying a new lease of life. This one's now a curry house in Whitechapel. And if you fancy a bit of light relief, this one's a comedy club. This one's a fancy bar in East London. And this is a beauty parlour near the city. How very convenient. Coming up next, I'm off to the cinema, 30s style. There's nothing quite like a ginger ale and a good night out at the pictures. But quite frankly, they don't make them like they used to. Not tonight, Josephine. Back in the heyday of cinema, the 1930s and 40s, there was practically a picture house on every main street in the capital. Some of the smaller ones, rather unkindly referred to as the local flea pit, whilst others, extravagant art deco temples, more opulent than any Hollywood set. And none more so than this place, the Granada Cinema in Tooting. Back in 1931, when it first opened, it was hailed as the finest picture house in the land. In its heyday, more than three million punters came to watch films here every year. It's a world away from today's multiplexes, as I discovered when I took a tour with Richard Gray, who first fell in love with this place as a starry-eyed youngster. Yes, remarkably elaborate. Well, you've got all these amazing Gothic details, and um, it's not just dreamt up of nowhere. Komasajewski, who was the Russian designer who did the interior, he absolutely ransacked a textbook of Gothic details. You can see more of it here at the top here, all this zigzag design. You were supposed to feel as you were coming into this amazing palace. Wow, this is medieval. Yes, here we are in this amazing Gothic cloister in Tooting, South London. Wow. It's got these mirrors, that's why it's called the Hall of Mirrors, and you've got these endless views looking across. Uh, and then it's various types of Gothic and Norman design all put together rather cleverly. Uh, and finally, when we walk door, you enter uh, the auditorium and you get the um, final effect of this amazing interior. And what are your earliest memories of coming here, Richard? I'd rather sort of long for the end of the film, in a way, or what, what, whatever was showing, um, because then the building came alive, the interior came alive, uh, and the lights would start lifting very, very imperceptibly. They would come lifting up, and then you'd get this incredible interior. And I thought it was just wonderful. And there'd, there'd be... Uh, you know, just the odd dotted head here, you know, these people still attending the temple of Gothic cinema. Unable to put enough bums on its well-upholstered seats, the Granada Cinema finally closed in the mid-70s. But more recently, it's found a new lease of life. And Richard reckons that counts as a happy ending.
Now, I so very often say, you know, thank God for bingo, because with these gigantic auditoria, these marvellous cinemas, there was no other use for them. The audience had completely deserted these fabulous cinemas. Dottie Manning is one fan of the silver screen who didn't desert the Granada. And she's supposed to be helping me win my fortune. Now, I haven't got a lot. But you missed a lot. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you have to me. Of course I have. And here, we're same They're not in any order, though. So going down, it is. It's not, not going 14, order. 19, oh, no, 13, that's, 11. That's Why is it not in the right that's order? That's right. Well, because it's bingo. It's, it's, yeah. it's a game of chance, isn't it? It's not going to say, well, they're all going to bloody win, then, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> So, myself, so Dottie, when did you first come here? In the early 50s. I had a little daughter and my friend had two little daughters. We had two little daughters in the road where we lived. We bought them all in this place and uh, they were showing them all what they wanted to see. Rock around the clock. Vanessa, they used to have trouble in the cinemas when that film showed, didn't they? They were dancing everywhere. They were da I can remember them dancing here up there. It was so, so new, wasn't it, Vaughan? And we called them then teeny boppers. Well, they called themselves teeny boppers. And do you remember how you felt the first time you entered this beautiful building? Beautiful, lovely. Especially that foyer, you know, with the beautiful stairways. You know, you felt you were really in a, a beautiful palace. You know, it was a lovely place. It had, uh, I think it had class. I mean, people come from all over the world to see this place. So in some ways you're not unhappy that it is a bingo hall? Oh no, it's a, it's a recreation, isn't it? So when it started to play bingo, then uh, we started to come to bingo, because that's where you could go without being escorted, you know? We can come in, I can come in here any time. I can be stranded out there and come in, have a nice cup of tea, coffee, something to eat, and everyone knows me. Well, though obviously it's rather sad that this beautiful old building isn't still being run as a cinema, Ironically, without the bingo, it may not be here at all. And I think, in fact, it's rather charming that it's still a centre of entertainment for the local community. Which is more than can be said for some of the other relics of the glory days of old cinemas. Still hanging on, but only just. But elsewhere in the city, entertainment, glamour and romance are still alive and well. regulars, Daisy, Bill and Ivy, have been tripping the light fantastic here for years. I was a raw beginner to the dancing world, absolutely raw beginner, and I'd heard about this place, but when I came down those stairs up there and looked, saw the chandeliers gleaming, and the place was just buzzing, absolutely alive, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't even move from those stairs. There was all Fred and Gingers on the floor, all practicing their steps, and I thought, one of these days, I'm going to dance like them. So we've been coming here over 40 years uh, for ballroom dancing. But originally, I came here when it was a cinema after the war, hot, steamy, smoky place. I couldn't dance, just learning, and I was so taken aback with all the people, felt a bit embarrassed, you know, so... It took a while to get the confidence to... Yes. ..to fit in. Wonderful, uh, absolutely wonderful. And how long have you been dancing? Uh, since about 1973. So a newcomer, really? When my husband died, I went to school to learn. Yes, I couldn't dance a step before then. Marvellous. So I took my medals and just love it. I've had partners, but they've died, and 
you just left on your own pot luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's life. <laughs> Back in the 50s, ballroom dancing was all the rage, and there were venues all across the capital. Finding the right dancing partner then was a doddle. In those days, there was lots of unattached men mm -hmm. and unattached women, and the men used to stand around the edge of the floor <laughs> with their eyes on the steps waiting for their favourite partner to come in. <laughs> And uh, it was fantastic in those days. Yes. Unfortunately, it's not quite the same now. Many of London's ballrooms have already seen their last waltz, but the Rivoli is still going strong, thanks to a loyal troupe of regulars and some innovative thinking by the management. Apparently on Saturday night you have a gay night. That's right. Once yeah. a that's month, right. I believe, and, and that's pr probably they get better attendance there than any, any of the yeah. others put together. Somebody well, said they line go, up outside sometimes. <laughs> Do you what dance? You do? No, not in the sense you'd recognise oh, it. No, oh, right. probably not. All oh, right. <laughs> but I'm hoping for maybe a little bit of a lesson later on. <laughs> Lovely. You yeah. do this what I call hot from side to side. Well, I call it. I've heard it called worse, I must oh, admit, right. yeah. Side to your left and close your feet. Forward with your left to the side and close your feet. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm okay. feeling it ever so slightly, yeah, go on. Forward. One, two, three. One, two, three. What now? Oh, 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 right again, right, yeah. Right. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Whoa, and I've gone, I've gone left there when I said I've gone right. I'll be getting exclusive access to the HQ of London's cabbies and dipping my toe in the watery world of London's Lidos. Including this magnificent specimen, Tooting Beck Lido in South London. <laughs>